Taiwan dailies. First and foremost, news from Southeast Asia. Hello, welcome to Duran ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. On ASEAN Daily, we will bring you daily updates and commentaries on issues and events that are impacting this region. I'm your host Arlene Tan, and today on Tuesday, 22nd of March, 2016, we will bring you the latest politics and current affairs news from Southeast Asia. Our top story today: The China Railway Group Limited, or CREC, one of the largest state-owned firms, will invest a two billion US dollar to develop a regional center in Bandar Malaysia, a project owned by the One Malaysia Development Berhad, or One MDB. Bandar Malaysia will be built on the site of former Sungai Besi military airfield, located three kilometers southwest of the city's Golden Triangle. At the launch in Kuala Lumpur, Prime Minister Najib Razak applauded the Chinese, saying, "We envisage a Bandar Malaysia becoming an ASEAN center for multinationals from around the world." He added, "This is an open endorsement by global companies of their continued confidence in Malaysia and a testimony of their faith in the Malaysian economy, which remains fundamentally strong." Bandar Malaysia will also serve as Malaysia's gateway to the world through the high-speed rail to Singapore, with direct links to the KLIA and Changi Airport. The proposed Pan-ASEAN rail transit to Bangkok and beyond. Bandar Malaysia's development blueprint also includes an underground city, which is modelled after a similar one in Montreal, Canada, with its mix of development, which includes financial and commercial centres, tourism, and shopping facilities, an indoor theme park, a cultural village, and theme theatres. In December, One MDB sold 60% of Bandar Malaysia to a consortium comprising CREC and Johor Base Iskandar Waterfront Holdings as part of the state-run firm's rationalisation plan to cut its debt. Bandar Malaysia is expected to attain 160 billion ringgit in gross development value when all three phases of construction are completed. This is according to developer of the Inskanda Waterfront Holdings Executive Vice Chairman Tan Sri Lim Kang Ho. Let's move on to the next news. New Ethnic Affairs Minister, vital for Myanmar. Myanmar's new president-elect Tin Chow told lawmakers in his maiden speech as president that he plans to tackle the long battle ethnic wars by creating a new ethnic affairs ministry. Mr. Tin Chow, a close confidant of Ms. Aung San Suu Kyi and who will rule as her proxy, indicated that addressing ethnic civil wars will be a major priority of his government, which officially takes power next week. Tin Chow added that a Ministry of Ethnic Affairs is of vital importance for the future of the Union of Myanmar, which needs peace, development, and sustainability. But conflicts continue to rage in several areas between ethnic minority armed groups and the still powerful National Army, which operates beyond the reaches of civilian government. After a ceasefire pact signed last year. Failed to include all the country's fighters. Some 240,000 people are displaced owing to unrest and communal conflict in Myanmar, mostly in the northern Kachin state, and in western Rakhine, where tens of thousands of stateless Rohingya Muslims remain in camps following outbreaks of communal violence in 2012. On another news, Grab seal e-commerce partnership with Indonesia's Lippo Group. Grab, Southeast Asia's leading riding hailing app operator, has announced a strategic partnership with Indonesia's conglomerate Lippo Group. Through the partnership, Grab will offer its transport and deliveries expertise to further enhance Lippo's e-commerce site, Matahari Mall. 
a Grab spokesperson told the Nikkei ASEAN Review that it can leverage on its Grab Bike motorcycle service to provide Indonesian consumers buying from Lipo's Matahari Mall with a quick and efficient parcel delivery service. Lipo Group rolled out Matahari Mall last year in the hope of becoming the next Alibaba, which is the global Chinese e-commerce company. Lipo aims to utilize its existing network of retail stores as payment points and warehouses for its e-commerce service. Online-based logistics services are gaining traction in Indonesia, but traffic jams and a lack of infrastructure means more bottlenecks for e-commerce companies in the archipelago nation. On the other hand, Tokopedia, an online shopping site, has been working since last year with Gojek, an Indonesian startup, to dispatch motorcycles for deliveries in some areas. That's all from our ASEAN Daily today. Thanks for tuning in to Duran ASEAN with me, Arlene Tan. For more updates on Southeast Asia, please go to our website at duranasen.com. If you're on the go, you can always download our tuning app on your mobile. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Duran ASEAN and Duran ASEAN TV. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Twitter and Instagram. We always welcome feedback from our listeners. Stay tuned with ASEAN Daily, Monday to Friday, same time at 12 to 1 p.m. on GMT Plus 8. Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing.